Okay, geology class, um, last set of questions. Um, there are four elements to it, so each of them worth one point and, and then one extra credit point. But I'm going to combine the in introduction for all four of the last ones into one introduction. Um, so it's qu question 6A, 6B and C, 6D, and 6E, parts 1 and 2. Notice that for part 6A, you only need to do the profile, not parts 1, 2, 3, or 4, only a profile. Okay, so for this one, I, I like this lab manual because we were just at Jordan, Minnesota. Now we're going to Nelson, Wisconsin. These are areas that you can drive through. And in fact, I would recommend driving to Nelson because it is a beautiful drive down along the Mississippi River on the Wisconsin side. Hop across to Winona on the Minnesota side and drive back up or vice versa. Beautiful drive. So if you, if you go to Nelson, we're going to zoom in on it a little bit. By the way, there's a, an ice cream shop, actually several of them, one in Stillwater in particular called Nelson's. And uh, um, I tell you, uh, if you go there, I dare you to try to eat the lumberjack. I dare you to try to consume the lumberjack. I, try, I dare you to try to consume anything other than the baby. Um, they're, they're, it's, it's impressive. So anyway, Nelson's does have a creamery. They got good ice cream there too. Um, so anyway, we're going to go to this spot here. Um, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, south of Nelson uh, to a place called Deer Creek. I got a nice blue dot there now. And uh, we'll zoom in on Deer Creek a little bit. Um, and so I can show you what, uh, what it con consists of. <laughs> it's not a terribly impressive uh, raging torrent of a, of a waterway, is it? Well, if we look at Deer Creek, um, we can go there and see these flat top bluffs that are typical of that part uh, of Wisconsin. There is Deer Creek. I think you could probably pretty close to jump across it. Maybe not. Maybe I got a bigger image of what I can do jump-wise than I used to. Uh, just to give you another image of the area, if you look at Deer Creek from across uh, the Minnesota, from on the Minnesota side, um, so you're looking across the Mississippi River here. Actually, if I go back to here, maybe I, I need to show you that. So there's Deer Creek. It's flowing into the Mississippi River, and the Mississippi River then is on the other side, and you can just see it through the trees right there. There's the Mississippi. Okay, so we'll go back to Deer Creek, which is on that side. Okay, so, um, uh-oh, my battery's running low. So if you look at the watershed on this side, you can see um, kind of the, a delineation of it. So this would be the Deer Creek watershed, and these flat top bluffs around it uh, would be kind of the divide between Deer Creek watershed and neighboring watersheds. And these little notches would be cut into the, those bluffs as, as erosion uh, moved them in. But the water that fell here would end up at Deer Creek, would end up here, okay? And you can kind of make that uh, notion of that out as well from, from this clip. So um, what you're going to do then in uh, this question is what your tax money is going to pay people to do all up and down um, any major waterway in the United States. And what they do is they calculate all inputs into major waterways like the Mississippi River. What's the drainage basin look like? What would a rainfall of a certain size on that drainage basin do to the flow in this river and correspondingly to the flow in the Mississippi River? And so, you know, flood prediction depends on these people doing their job. So question 6A, first of all, um, you're going to go to uh, this map of Deer Creek. And uh, let's zoom in on it a bit. Maybe not that much. So, so here's Deer Creek. I'm messing it up here a bit, but that's okay. And so here's where it flows into the Mississippi. So this is the course of, the, of Deer Creek. And it flows... Um, all the way up and it gets dashed here. Dash means it's an ephemeral stream. Ephemeral means it doesn't flow all year. It flows probably in the spring when there's snow melt in it, but not in the fall when it gets dry. And so it, it loops all the way up to right about here. This would be a flat top bluff. There's a road on it. And on the other side here, this water would go into another stream. And so what we want you to do, what I want you to do is to give me a longitudinal profile of that stream along its course all the way up to here. And there's a good explanation of how to do that on page 148, kind of a Cliff Notes version of that. If you take a long piece of paper, you'll need all 11 inches of it. Put the corner here, that's your starting point. And, uh, and everywhere a contour line crosses that paper, down here you could probably use index contours, just the dark ones. 
everywhere in index. So you, so you want to record the elevation at the start, which, what is that, 470, 670 feet? I can't make it out right here. Um, it start, of, start of the creek where it flows into the Mississippi. Um, then you, 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 everywhere it makes a corner, you hold down on the paper at that point and, uh, and turn the paper so that the edge of the paper follows the, the course. And everywhere a con, uh, index contour, contour line crosses it, um, you make a little mark on your pencil on, on the edge of your paper and mark the elevation of that contour line uh, on the paper. Continue up, turning the paper every time the stream turns. You don't have to catch every little corner, but the main corners. Um, all the way up to the top. When it gets steeper here, you'll probably definitely want to use um, not all the contour lines. Um, but anyway, you'll end up with a sheet of paper. Uh, uh, along the edges of it are marks uh, that are uh, at certain elevations. You'll take that piece of paper to another piece of paper of the same length and draw a longitudinal profile like it shows you how to do on page 148. Okay, so that's, that's uh, part 6A. And again, only the profile. I don't need the other elements to it. Uh, part 6B and C... I want you to outline the uh, watershed for Deer Creek. So in other words, anywhere that rain falls on this map and gets into Deer Creek, I want you to delineate that. So you're going to start here. So like rain falling right here, this is a bluff that slopes down in the Mississippi. If it falls on this side, it's going to get to Deer Creek. If it falls on this side, it's not. And so you're, you're going to, you know, draw a line like so all the way around here because this is a flat top here. You can read the elevation numbers to, to see that, okay? And if you go back to... Um, this image right here, you can see those flat tops, okay? And so you're going to delineate where water falling on this drainage basin would get to Deer Creek. Now here is going to be a little tricky because there's all these deep valleys, these draws that are cut back in, but still water falling here, it's going to flow downhill into Deer Creek. Water falling on this side, that's going to flow down here and not into Deer Creek. Um, so you're going to, you know, water falling here, that's going to go down. Yep. It's going to get into Deer Creek. Um, it's going to go across here somewhere around in this area and trace it around the other side, paying careful attention to the elevations. If you do a careful job with this, the rest of this problem will go well for you. So make sure you're careful with delineating the divide, basically, that separates drainage that goes into Deer Creek from drainage that goes into other streams. Okay, so if you do that well, this is six, uh, part 6B six and C, um, you're going to end up with a, a line around this map. Now, each of these sections, each of these squares is a section. You notice there's a number in the middle of it, okay? And if you remember, um, a section is one square mile, 640 acres, one square mile. There are 5,280 feet in a square mile, and, and so using that information... You can estimate the number of square miles that are in the Deer Creek drainage basin. Now, yes, certainly you're going to have parts of sections. Like you might have, um, um, what, what would be a good example here? So like here's the top of the divide. So, so maybe your divide would go right along this road here. And so this part of section three would be in the Deer Creek drainage basin. This part would not. I don't know. I would call that more than 50%, more than maybe 60, 60, 65%. So um, uh, of, of a section would be uh, there. So 0.65, this whole one would be in. This, uh, probably most of that section would be in, uh, but only a small portion of this section would be in, maybe uh, 0.3, I'm just guessing. And, and so using that kind of a system, uh, I want you to end up with an estimation of how many uh, square miles are in the Deer Creek drainage basin. Square miles, this is one square mile. One of these sections is one square mile. And then the, the last part is gonna ask you to convert that to square feet, okay? Now you can't, now you know there's 5,280 feet in a mile, okay? And you will calculate, let's just say for kicks and grins, you got seven square miles. That's wrong, by the way. If you got seven square miles, you can't just multiply that by 5,280. Um, that won't work. We want square miles. So 5,280 times 5,280 times 7 would give you the square feet if the Deer Creek drainage basin comprised 7 square miles. Okay, so that's part B and C. Okay, now here's the payoff. Part, um, part D um, gives you a scenario where um, it, it talks about the precipitation that normally falls on that Deer Creek area. And um, 
it asks you to calculate the, the volume of water. G given, given the amount of water that falls on this drainage basin, how much does uh, ends up down here at the mouth of Deer Creek as it goes into um, the Mississippi River? What is the contribution of Deer Creek to the Mississippi River? I know it seems small. You got that little bitty creek flowing into that great big river. But people are paid to make to do this work for all streams that contribute water to the Mississippi. The more of the picky little streams that flows into it, the better their prediction for um, what flooding might, might occur on the Mississippi River. Um, now, of course, not every rainfall uh, falls on all of the Mississippi River drainage basin. So that also is taken into account when they're doing these flood calculations. But um, that's what I want you to do. So you're given a very real life situation here about the amount of inches of precipitation falls, 29.1. That's about average for around here. And, and determine how much water goes out Deer Creek into Mississippi. Then the last part, part E, there are two parts to it, two scenarios. In the first scenario, it basically says all the water that falls on Deer Creek drainage basin gets into the Mississippi. Okay, duh. Well, that doesn't happen, of course. So it is the second scenario that's a little more real, that's distinctly more realistic. And there they talk about losses to infiltration, transpiration, groundwater, things of that sort. And, uh, and, and so this is a much more realistic uh, um, um, question dealing with what people deal with all the time. Given a rainfall of a certain event, or in this case, given the annual rainfall that typically falls on Deer Creek, how much water does it contribute to the Mississippi River? That's it, folks. I hope I haven't been too long-winded with this and give it a go. Remember, double points. Um, do a good job. I'll expect um, uh, good quality if I'm giving you that much extra credit, but you can do it. Okay, thank you. Have a good day.